Welcome back, guys, to another roundtable. My name is Adam Victor. Beside me, Rosemary, Rosemary, the other person joining us. And today, we're going to talk about Archegos Capital and how its founder Bill Huang uh, lost twenty billion in two days. I mean, I, I don't know. How do you lose twenty billion in two days? First, you have to have twenty billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to find out why someone with that much money would lose so much money so fast, and know what the lessons uh, we can pick, you know, from that, you know, this this whole thing as retail investors. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I mean, first question: How would you feel if you lost twenty billion? Wow. <laughs> if I have another twenty billion, it's okay. It's just another day. <laughs> but then, if if there's all all of my net worth, I think I'll be pretty devastated. Yeah. Historic- <laughs> historically, I think a lot of people will take take their lives. Yeah. I mean, look at uh, Jesse Livermore, one yeah. of the it's greatest all. trader mm-hmm. in the world, right? I mean, he took his life when he lost so much money, billions at a time. Yeah. If you account the inflation. Yeah. yeah. So I think this is. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's not easy to handle. Yeah, it's not easy yeah, to handle. Yeah. All right. So I think um, let's have a quick background of you know who the characters are in this. Uh, whole story so there's Archegos which is the family office mm. hedge fund which lost this money and its founder Bill Huang mm. alright so tell us more about you know Archegos and Bill so let me talk about uh, what what happened on Wall Street just briefly explain so that you get a brief overview of what happened so basically there's this guy called Bill Huang and then he went to open uh, multiple brokerages at uh, multiple banks so there's Credit Suisse Morgan Stanley Wells Fargo uh, Goldman Sachs you name it and the thing is since he opened a family office they do not have access to the regular filings like uh, other hedge funds would have filed for so with each brokerages what he did was he took on leverage and then since these brokerages they are not able to speak to each other you don't know why he's holding so he's able to leverage up his positions and he bought multiple stocks and then uh, one of his position didn't do well and then everything start uh, to started to crater so that's basically the main uh, gist of what happened so but Bill Huang is basically um, a tiger cup he came from uh, the tiger management which is run by Julian Robertson who is a legendary investor on Wall Street and once he came out um, uh, Jul- w- that's when Julian Robertson actually closed his fund so Ju- Julian said that you know why don't I see you with 25 million dollars in capital you start your own fund so he went to start tiger Asia and he did pretty well over there and over uh, in uh, at its peak, he's, he man- he's managing about $5 billion uh, in, in asset under management. So uh, with that, after after that, he got caught in uh, some insider trading with uh, Chinese bank stocks and he was fined by uh, about $60, billion, uh, $60 million. And with that $60 million fine, he closed his fund and he converted that into a family office, which is Archegos, to manage his own personal wealth. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the story of it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So regarding who is this Bill Huang is, I think it's a very, very interesting character. So as I was reading and researching, I think it's very funny because this guy at the peak of his wealth, right, his net worth is about 30 billion, you know, wow. at the peak, you know. Mm. And when you look at it, people who are this amount, you expect like very uh, big houses, uh, very flamboyant, yeah. you know, driving a very expensive car, Right, uh, having private jet. But if you look at the lifestyle of uh, Bill Huang, uh, it's basically he lives in a suburban area, right? Uh, he's driving a Hyundai SUV and he's a billionaire, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And he, he focused all his energy on his family, his uh, work, and especially church, right? He donate millions to the church and he always go to the church uh, and preach and talk about investment and sharing and all this, right? Mm-hmm. So he's basically a guy that is under the radar, Right, he's a closet billionaire. Nobody knows it, right? And and then when this thing blew up, suddenly who is Bill Huang? You mm-hmm. know, so I, f- I find it very interesting because uh, he already a billionaire. Why why do you want to leverage it up? Right? I mean, like you got one billion dollar and you want to yeah. What is the motivation? Yeah, right? what's the motivation? So I look at the his lifestyle, right? Uh, it, it really feels that he's not the kind of people you know that wants to go after those uh showing off their wealth, very ego person, right? So from this uh, scenario, I, I see, I, I feel, I felt that he he actually has the uh, excitement you know, to chase after uh, risk mm-hmm. uh, gains or something like that, right? So that's that's the feel that I I get. You know, he just want to take risks, you know. Okay. But I, I'm 
but that's only based on this, right? Like, like I mean, Japanese have a saying, right? Everybody have three faces, right? Okay. One face is for the public, one face is for the people who are close to you, and one face, right, is for yourself, and you only know that yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So probably in within him, he, you know, he have a real character that we, we don't understand, you know? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Like, can he say, you know, I mean, like, when he he's doing uh, all this investment, he do it like a devil. <laughs> You mean you for Bill, not Kenny, right? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, so he seems like a really regular guy, family guy, you know, religious and all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he really took on a lot of risk uh, when, I think for the love of the game. Yeah. I don't know how you say, how you yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, let's focus on, you know, how he lost so much money so fast. So the headline from Bloomberg is 20 billion in two days. So I think you mentioned a bit about that already, right, Kenny, where he basically had multiple brokerage accounts with banks, the big yes. banks, and uh, he leveraged all of them up, mm. right? So how did that fall? Well, how did the, do the, you know, the dominoes fall? And he lost twenty billion in two days. How did that, how did that so happen? So he held highly concentrated position, a highly levered concentration positions in multiple stocks. One in particular is actually Viacom. Mm -hmm. So Viacom, uh, on uh, on March twenty second, I think around there, I think they announced that they're going to raise three billion dollars in convertible stocks, um, uh, convertible debt and stocks. So they need to invest that money into streaming because right now Netflix, Disney Plus, they, they are very competitive. So in order to get into a space, they have to invest in content. So they are raising money and the market took it really uh, badly. I think mm -hmm. on the first day when it closed, it went down by 9%. The following day, it went down by another 23%. So that actually, took, he took a very big hit. So uh, the reason why is because he actually uh, held on to the bought these positions through the banks using CFDs, mm -hmm. which is a form of derivatives. So what ha what what it stands for is basically contracts for difference. So for example, if you buy um, a stock for a dollar and when it goes up by another dollar, the bank will pay you that dollar in cash. And yet when it goes down, you have to put up collateral for it. So with this, you're able to control a large amount of stock with a mini just by putting up a fraction of the cost. For example, he just he can just put up $200,000 to control $1 million of uh, shares. Uh, and of course, the reason why all these banks do not know what he's holding is also because that all these stocks are held on their balance sheet rather than on his um, his personal, personal oh, balance sheet or his family's office balance sheet. So there's no way to check how much he's holding. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, yeah. I think he's got a 10 billion asset under management, right? So he can technically leverage up to uh, 50, billion, 50 billion, according to the reports. Five items. Times. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's actually what happened. So um, when he, he created the, the bankers were telling him that, why don't you just close the position and take the losses? Then he refused to do so. And then they went into an emergency meeting among the Wall Street <laughs> because the bankers. Risk is, <laughs> yeah, because the risk is so high. Yeah. Things are yeah. collapsing. And yeah. if they don't close the position early, the banker will probably have lost a lot more money. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the banks will be on the hook, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So they met up and they realized that he's leveled up five times yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, around there. And then they were shocked. So then uh, with that, they asked him to post additional margin, uh, put up collateral, and yeah. he refused to do so. So eventually, it's all almost like a domino effect. So whichever bank started the domino, uh, we should sell off the positions. Morgan Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, if you are the first to sell, at least you don't have to sell the price yeah. at a lower price. Yeah, correct, because if you start selling, then the price should go down some more, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the rest will be holding yeah. the bag. Credit Suisse is a bigger sucker in this <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I think but, a lot of them didn't realize that you know, he borrowed so much money from different banks, yep. mm -hmm. different brokers. Yeah. 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 But I also, yeah. I also think the reason why he, he refused is because if all the banks play along with him, mm -hmm. didn't sell the position, right, and the stock went back up, nothing will happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because the banks start selling, right, it pushed the price spiral it down, right, then that leads to more margin call for him. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that's why I think um, Goldman was one of the first to put a plug. So they came out there unscathed. They, they did not lose any money. Mm. Then after that, uh, multiple banks actually followed along. Credit Suisse being the last loss, about $5.5 billion. Nomura actually. also. Nomura yeah, as well, $2.3 yeah. billion. Yeah. So a lot of them suffered heavy losses and they have to restructure their business, laid off, get, and of course have to tell the shareholders why they lo lost money. So uh, yeah, so that's what happened uh, to them. So then he... he uh, as a result of this, it wiped out twenty billion dollars of his net worth, or maybe the whole of his net worth, everything in, yeah. in two days. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, that's a huge hit to have. So actually, you know, I mean, the was a was it was it a Vi- Viacom or CBS? The ah, Viacom, Viacom CBS. CBS. So I mean, the, the stock price nine yeah. percent and then twenty three percent. It's a big drop. But if you didn't leverage that, that's yep. you still you're still fine, yeah. Yeah. right? You just it's just a it's a p- expensive yeah. paper loss. Uh, you don't it doesn't look that good on your portfolio. But the fact that he was le- leveraged so high with yep. different banks who didn't know that he was leveraged with yeah. each other. Yeah. Uh, then that just became like a, a whole like yeah. uh, you know like a whole storm. Yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, out. if he just yeah. invests his billion dollars without leveraging, he won't he won't die. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. So it's actually very powerful because like uh, because of the concentration uh, concentration and the leverage that he took, uh, Viacom went from around thirty dollars and uh, and after that to a hundred dollars within a couple months. Actually. Three months. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. because everyone's ho- starting to sell off that position, it went from a hundred dollars down to forty six dollars. Wow. No, actually, it went out to fifty dollars. So it's a fifty percent drop from mm-hmm. there. So yeah. Yeah, but if you leverage that, it becomes a whole lot more. If more. it's five times. Yeah. yeah. The reason yeah. I think why it goes up so much and falls so much is because it's leverage position, right? Yeah. Once the bank start to do a margin, a uh, call, a lot of uh, they will have to force sell the share. So that's where the prices of the stock will tumble significantly. And Correct. Like a double digit. And at his yeah. volume, he has he has so many sh- like shares to sell. Yeah. It's a huge position to dump onto the market, right? Yeah. 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 And then yeah. The prices really do come down. So it really really was like a domino effect. Yeah. Yep. And that's how he lost twenty billion in two days. So the fallout from this event is just basically the banks that lost money so far. And yep. Bill Huang himself. Bill, I mean yeah, yeah of course Bill Huang. <laughs> 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 I mean sorry for the guy. Um but yeah so the fallout was the banks basically. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, banks can suffer, take the loss, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think we wanted to share the stories because, you know, someone like who's so successful, he's been in the markets for so many years, decades, and he's built up his wealth to billions, like you said, 30 billion at one point. Yep, the net worth. And yep. at this, for this, our KGOS was 10 billion in management. I mean, how would you manage 10 billion dollars if it, you, would you take this sort of risk? Oh, uh, no, I'll probably <laughs> of like. Not, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, uh, I'll be on a jet plane. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can man. just make money slowly, even a ten percent return year after year is still a good return. Yeah. Right? you still can live pretty good life. I mean, you, you your ten billion, you can live for the rest of your life. You don't without worry. You I mean, spend one million every ten day. million is already great, man. Yeah. Ten yeah. billion is yeah. like a whole new ball game. Um, but yeah, I think we wanted to share the story because even someone like that who would think that you've, he probably knows what he's doing, right? Yep. Compared to the typical guy. But he leveraged so high, he lost everything in two days. His whole career, his whole life, you know, work. Yeah. It's just like gone. What are the lessons that, you know, retail investors like us can learn from this, you know, whole episode? Your luck don't run forever. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. think he was lucky? It was always just like, he just really risky his whole career. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. it's very risky, la, the I, way he thinks. But I mean, sometimes, you know, this is, you can see that all the investment he did in the past, right, w- was the right investment, right? Just mm-hmm. so happened that this was the, it actually is the right investment. It just that happened that they, they issued the shares and it goes the other mm. way. But that is something that is out of his control, mm-hmm. yeah. right? I- right. So that's why I say his luck don't run, your luck don't run always on. So always focus on the fundamentals, right? Don't I- leverage. That's he the best. actually did focus on the fundamental, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But what yeah. went wrong is he took on too much debt. Right. Yeah. But because the thing with leverage is that you only work when the stock market goes up. Yeah. When the goes instrument in the that direction. you buy goes yeah. up. Right. But you once it starts to come down and we all know stock happens all the time, right? It mm-hmm. goes up and down. Uh, it, the strategy doesn't work when it comes down. Right. So it happens to be in the wrong time where, you know, borrow too much money and then all of a sudden the banker started to do a margin call and one followed the other mm-hmm. and that leads to the collapse of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. think he got more and more aggressive as he he, he went uh, deeper yeah. into this. So what I from what I know is that once he CFDs, once you make a profit, the bank will pass you cash. He he bought more with that and levered yeah. more with that again. Oh, wow. yeah. So uh, yeah, so it's highly level. So I think is how you get rich is is very important. How you build your wealth through the stock market because that is the habit that stays with you in the long run. And okay, uh, the way you build your wealth that way uh, it's also not sustainable of course it's great uh, things we always expect things to move along uh, smoothly but mm-hmm. at the same time if he's he wasn't leveraged actually it's not a big deal it's just another day he can hang on to it until the fundamentals uh, improve of these companies continue to grow and improve and he will continue to profit uh, nicely in the next yeah. 10 20 years but then because of leverage he got the rug pulled from underneath him he cannot hold anything else and lost all his wealth overnight so mm-hmm. i think it's not worth it for 
investors to take on so much risk because everyone is trying to get rich really quickly the uh, overnight you know double your money uh, double triple but the thing is does it really make sense to make money so quickly and leverage is all is almost like a double edge sword one pointing towards the market yes you can make a killing in the market but at the same time one mistake you can kill yourself yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so i think it's very important to be prudent with your cash we spend a lot of time doing financial planning saving and everything but somehow when it comes to the stock market we we, we tend to throw everything all away thinking just you know we we research about uh, where we want to stay where are the nearest schools for the kids and the future and we think about how we invest when we buy our own property but when it comes to the stock market people just say oh why you invest in stock cause it's going to go up then everyone start investing in the stock market yeah, yeah so yeah. i mean that. actually i came across this article uh, written by morgan hauser at the full site um the actually in the past uh bef- before i mean we are only familiar with uh warren buffett and charlie Munger, right mm-hmm. actually there was a third guy in the partnership at the time okay. right so there were three of them super investor Rick know Green. how to make uh, Rick <laughs> i think yeah. you probably heard of it before yeah. uh so he the three of them were really good at picking stock making money in the stock market but uh they know how to get rich right but okay. staying rich is a different skill set mm. it requires different kind of discipline and apparently only charlie Munger and warren buffett know how to stay rich uh, and yep. also know, knowing how to getting rich right and rick apparently were in a hurry right and yep. he went on to borrow a lot of money and eventually he got wiped out mm-hmm. and he had to sell his shares to warren buffett berkshire hathaway a mm. shares at below 40 dollars today yeah. is more than mm. six yeah. figure right yeah yep. yeah so no one has you know remembered rick but dick rick is the guy basically was too eager to make money quickly mm-hmm. so he took on the leverage yep. so the key lesson here is that I think it's very important not to take on too much debt yep. because debt is a double-edged sword. It mm. can kill you. It can help you make a lot of money, of course, but when the times come, stocks start to go down, mm. you, you can really lose a lot of money. It can yeah. wipe you out. Right? Yeah. I think uh, it's all about how you manage the risk. La. Like Buffett Eric got this saying that you, uh, we want to walk one, two step forward and just a half step back. Only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just keep doing it throughout the years and eventually you be a balloon to be a big amount of money yeah. right but of course not say leverage is bad uh, even Charlie Munger also say that you 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 should leverage up to I think 20% uh, of your net worth right the, the the thing about leverage is when the leverage blew up right it don't kill you mm-hmm. right that, that's why he said I think he give the 20% mark you know like if you is, yeah. leverage extra 20% but if the 20% blew up it don't kill you but he he, he got a condition his, his condition is that you leverage during the time where uh, your probability of winning is very, very high. So like like uh, economic crisis and the companies that you bought is fundamentally strong, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what uh, he said, right? So yeah. I'm not saying leverage is bad. It's just that uh, when you leverage in stock, you have to be really, really careful because uh, the stock price is very volatile, right? It, it moves every single day, right? It's not like property, you know? Property don't drop 20% on a single day, mm-hmm. right? So that's why uh, property... Uh, uh, can be leveraged and there's more recurring in terms of the rental payment to pay the debt, right? So so when you want to leverage to invest in volatile uh, volatile assets, uh, you really have to be very, very careful, right? Yeah, so actually, uh, so it, although we say that it's good to take manageable leverage, the, for most retail investors out there, what I want to tra- try to say is uh, be consistently profitable. Find a style that you, you're able to you know that your judgment is good and everything, then you leverage. I think leverage is the last thing you should think about. It's not very important, but being consistently profit- profitable is more important. And if you were to take on leverage, what happens is that you also need to take in- into account your own personal financial leverage instead of just, you know, brokerage accounts, a different kind of leverage mm-hmm. or, or yeah. that you take. Yeah, so then look at it as a one one holistic picture, whether you can handle it. And let's say if the stock market were to go down 50% tomorrow, like like in any crisis, are you able to handle it? Do a stress test on yourself. And if you can handle it, then it's fine. If you cannot, just do without it. You you will not die without leverage, mm-hmm. actually. In, in fact, yeah. without leverage, it actually can save you because you have the holding power to hold a stock for the next like 10 years and, and yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm hearing prices. is that you need to be very clear and very, you know, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. You yep. know, when you're investing in whatever it is, whether it's stocks, property, uh, what, whatever it is, that you need to have a like a very set process that you can rely upon. It's proven that it works for you mm. and you build your wealth consistently that yep. way, mm. right? And then, once you're good at that, then maybe you could consider taking a bit of leverage, like what Charlie Munger yep. would say, 25% yeah. during a crisis and then you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, it will boost your returns. But if you're like, you know, you're still new and you want to get, like you want to get in a hurry to get rich. Then don't leverage. Then don't leverage. Because those people who are in a hurry, they were like, 
just go YOLO, right? Yeah, yeah. bow yeah, yeah. to make mistakes. YOLO, man. and yeah. yeah, you could YOLO for maybe years, and yeah. then you're like, this is the way it, to make money. You just need one time. But you just need one, one crisis, yeah. one mistake. It's like a snake game of snakes and let you go the way up. <laughs> just one the wrong snake, you're down, Tumbledore. back to zero. And, you, and yep. by the time you're maybe 60 years old, like wow. Bill Huang, yeah. he's 57, right? So yeah. then what are you going to do then? Yep. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the lesson that we want to share with you guys today. So, um, I mean, all of us, I don't think we will ever lose 20 billion in two days. Hopefully not. <laughs> if we ever get halfway there, just don't leverage. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, no, just one, one billion or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I hope this, uh, you know, this round table really helped you out. So again, once again, this is uh, my name is Adam. This is Victor. Thank you. Bruce and, and Kenny. Thank you. You're the fifth person to joining us. Thank you so much. If you like this video, just hit the like button again. We have more videos coming up, so do subscribe to our channel. So once again, thank you for watching and we'll see you around again. <laughs>